don't know. I've, I've just about given up. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and it's funny. I, I try and do things. Like, got a bunch of merchandise to try to sell. And shit like that. Hundred and some necklaces, rings, and earrings, all this crap, thinking I'm going to sell it, but I'll be honest, I feel like I'm at the last, I feel like this is the end, man, like, I hate to say it, I don't want to die, but I don't know what the fuck to do, man, I, I, I feel like there's nothing out there for me, you know? Like I'm just fucking cursed. And I got no one that basically gives a damn if I even live or die, you know? I don't even know who the fuck would show up if I had a funeral. Would I even have a funeral if I die? I don't know. Is anybody even gonna show up? Does anybody even give a damn? <laughs> kind of shit are they going to talk about me behind my back when I die, you know? I'm just going to have my dad go around and say, yeah, he's a fucker. He's a fucking loser. He's dead. You know? <laughs> Does anybody even give a shit if I live or die? At this point, I'm like, I don't know, I, I, I really, I don't, I don't feel like I know what to do anymore, like, I, I think I'm a good person, you know, I'm a good dude, I'm a nice person most of the time, I'm probably smarter than most. But I feel like such a goddamn idiot, you know? It's like this whole fucking world is just revolves around money, money, money. And if you ain't got that money, money, money coming in, then you're fucked, you know? Like there ain't no goddamn home for me, you know? There don't seem to be any home for me. Doesn't seem like anybody cares if I die or if I'm just left alone forever. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm being kind of fatalistic right now. There's just <sighs> God, I don't know what the fuck to do. I want to go home. I never imagined that life could end up like this. In a million years, I never thought... I never thought it was possible for things to be like this, you know? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't worry about dying because... I should just realize that the whatever fucking force keeps me here hates my guts so much that it wouldn't even let me die, right? Everybody's gonna be trapped and suffering forever and ever because this place is fucking hell. I don't know. I don't want to die. I just, but God damn it. I feel like nobody gives a shit if I live or die. You know? 
That's what it feels like. I feel like my own fucking father would be there to piss on my grave or something, right? If I no wait, oh that's right, you have to be a fucking bajillionaire to even have a goddamn grave because it'll just burn your corpse into a pile of ashes nowadays. <laughs> Fuck, man. I'd rather you chuck my ass in a ditch than to burn me to ashes. Who the cares what the hell I would want, right? Who cares about my my fucking wishes, right? Nobody. Nobody fucking cares. Fuck, I hate this place. I thought I was in heaven or something. <laughs> place so much potential so much fucking potential for you know there's so much potential that this place has it could be fucking beautiful that's what's so sad and so sickening is that this place could be so goddamn beautiful could be so good. And just knowing that while I live this existence of fucking suffering and pain and just just being tormented basically. <laughs> give up basically all these great places where I can like if this was a free world if it was actually a free world and not some kind of a hellish prison scape well I could just clear an area right there in the woods and build a home and live there and be perfectly happy and I could plant my garden right there in front of the house front of the place that I built and <laughs> walk around in nature and just you know I thought about just going out in the forest I thought about just wandering the fuck out into the forest and making a home you know cause I could build things, you know, myself, like a fort class up, I could build cabins, I could build walls, I could build, I mean, everything is right there, it's just waiting to be built, you know, but how the hell would you ever even be allowed to in this world, it's like any... <laughs> You gotta be a fucking millionaire or something to have a home. If you try to build a home of your own, well, there'll be somewhere that someone there to chase you the fuck away, right? And wander out in the woods and build a home. Like, who the fuck is gonna be there for me? Nobody. I'm so sick of being alone. I don't get it. Why don't... I ought to have a wife or something, you know? It's... It's... 
it fucks with my head, like, big time when I see, like, I see it all the time. I see these dudes that are complete, total dickhead, like, jerks, you know, like, the meanest, nastiest, dumbest, fucking, just evil fucking jerks, you know, and they're being followed around by some beautiful woman that just fucking treats him like a king, you know? <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, if they get hurt, some woman will be there to to help them. And, and me, for some reason, I'm just left the fuck alone. When I was a teenager, I, one of the first girls I started to fall for, I met her at the gym, you know, I used to go to this gym, lift weights, and I met this beautiful girl named Alyssa there, freaking supermodel looks, you know, and her family was super traditional, you know, very heavy involved in the Christian church. She was like teaching Sunday school. I'd go to the church and I'd bring her flowers, chocolates, and to ask permission from her father to sit next to her. Couldn't even hold her hand. Like that's... <laughs> and then her and her sister died in a car wreck on the way to church little sister, you know, and then I fell in, then, then I end up falling in love with this woman that turned out to be married, and she left me to go back to her husband, and then she left her husband for his best friend, <laughs> and I end up hooking up with her 10 years later again, she cheated on her husband, hooked up with me. Told me she flushed the ring down the toilet because I had proposed to her and I gave her a fucking engagement ring that was like my mom's uh, engagement ring. She gave that to me to give to. And I proposed to her and she said she'd marry me. And then to find out she's already married and she left my ass. That broke my heart. So that's what led me into the being so stupid and drinking and stuff. And that Alyssa, that wasn't the last time that I lost somebody, you know. I used to date this chick named Mandy. She asked me to marry her a bunch of times, man. Mandy. She's actually published in uh, numerous... She has numerous publications, basically. She was a, as a veterinarian, but what she actually was was like a research scientist that experimented on mice and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty fucked up, actually. She told me what her job really was. It was just pretty screwed up. It really fucked with her head, too, man. She went nuts over the whole thing. Yeah, she she passed away too, man. Her I had her her hamster. I had to take care of her hamster for a few months after she left, after she was gone. I remember there's this other chick that died too, actually that. I guess I tried to make myself forget her name and maybe it worked, you know, there's this chick that I started talking to when I was like, I don't know, maybe 
I don't know how old I was, maybe 10 years old or no, like preteen or something, 12, 13 or something when I started talking to her. And uh, she had leukemia or something, you know, some, I think it was leukemia. It was something like leukemia. It was a very complicated name, so I don't remember exactly what it was, but basically leukemia, you know, and uh talked to her on the phone for hours and hours, you know, I remember one day, I was out in the driveway, this old house, back when I used to live on three acres, it's a two-story house, fuck, I missed that bedroom, <laughs> this upstairs bedroom I used to have, super high ceiling with like a ceiling fan, and there was like a door that opens to leads to an upstairs porch that go you can walk around the upstairs porch and walk over to the roof i used to sit out there and watch the stars and set up lawn chairs up there and sit out and watch meteor showers and stuff anyways so that chick I walked out in the driveway one day, I remember, I think that's kind of how I first made uh, contact with God, so, you know, whatever you want to call it. I, uh, I prayed to God for that girl with leukemia, and I prayed to give... 10 years of my life to that girl she died exactly 10 years later that's when I met Mandy it was around that exact time was the last time I talked to that girl I feel like this world just fucking with my head, you know, like big time. I couldn't fucking sleep for for shit for the longest time, and then I end up reaching for the goddamn beers because I was just so damn frustrated. Drinking the whole goddamn case of beer. And I open up the curtain, I look out, and there's a midget walks past, like, what? You know? I mean, like I said, I think the universe is just fucking with my head, you know? <laughs> it's straight up just screwing with my head. like this old guy that said he had cancer or something was gonna said he was gonna die months and many moons ago basically and he's been here for like a year he looks better than he did before you know he looks like he got healthier or something <laughs> this universe fucking with my head you know I mean, it's clearly not a real place, but whatever the hell it is, it's fucking with my head and it's hurting me and it's just trying to scare me and hurt me and fucking beat me down, basically. Oh, that's right, that old man, he's the one 
He said, oh, it's heaven. Yeah, he said that when I was, I was drunk and walked out there and said, where the fuck am I? What is this place? And he said, heaven. I said, yeah, you're dead. This is heaven. <laughs> it's like, really? Sure as hell don't feel like heaven. Could be. It's got potential to be, but... I mean, like, if I had a home, maybe. If I could get away from all this, like, extreme fucking evil and the constant threats on my life and the total disregard and hate for my own father and shit, you know? Like, if I had somebody who, like, cared about me, like a wife or something, you know? It fucks with my head so much when I see these, these dudes that are like, I mean, I'm not fucking perfect. I know that. I, I know I'm a screw up and I ain't quite totally right, you know, but I have to see it all the time. This is one of the things that really fucks with my head is there's all these dudes, man, that are like just the biggest jerks you could possibly imagine total total jerks like total douchebags man just emanating douchery and they've got these women that cling to them and treat them like a king <laughs> jealous yeah Yes, I am. I'm lonely, man. How come total jerks have these women, like, hanging on to them, treating them like kings, and I got nothing? <laughs> it's actually, it's really fucking weird, man, because, like, when I was younger... I mean, there's dudes now that probably only ever been with two or three women in their entire life, but they're married with kids, and <laughs> and I probably hooked up with like 200 women in my day, you know, and get the single fucking one of them to stick around, or run off, or they overdose or some shit, you know? Maybe. <sighs> I don't know, Mandy drove me nuts, man. But... Because she was like, she she gave the term alcoholic a whole new fucking meaning, dude. <laughs> you know? I mean, she had all these pharmaceutical drugs that they had her on, and she she would just drink and drink and drink and drink to no end. I couldn't keep up with her ass if I tried, man. I remember I tried to help her, like, stop, you know? She would, like... She came after me with a fucking kitchen knife one time because I was trying to hide her beer from her, you know? I crawled up on the fucking roof of the shed <laughs> with the goddamn beer, and she's, like, chasing me. <laughs> chasing me with a fucking kitchen knife. I'm like, no, you need to stop drinking. You're killing yourself. She's like, fucking give me the beer. 
I'm not even kidding, dude. She got out of the hospital. She checked herself out of the hospital one time when she OD'd. I had to call a fucking ambulance. And she had to get, like, surgery because of some bleeding in her throat from drinking so goddamn much, you know? They said that she had a bleed in her throat from all the goddamn alcohol. And she checks herself out and said, tells them that I'm going to drive, right? And then she goes right out to the parking lot with has her keys. She gets in the fucking driver's seat, high as a kite on whatever pills they had her on. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I should be driving. What are you doing? You know? And then if I hadn't grabbed the steering wheel, I grabbed the steering wheel and turned the keys off and pulled them out of the ignition. If I hadn't, she she would have wrecked into the front of the fucking hospital with the goddamn SUV that she had. What was it, like a Ford? Um, not an Expedition, like this, a step down from Expedition, I forget what it's called. But... She almost wrecked that fucking thing right into the front of the hospital. I had to, like, reach over from the passenger side and st stomp on the brake, turn the key off. And then the cops came. <laughs> no, dude, I'm telling you, man. And they didn't do shit. They said, oh, well, she's fine. Just drive her. You have no idea what it was like trying to get away from her, honestly. I mean, okay. I mean, it sounds bad, but, like, she was a stalker, you know? I, uh, I look fondly on her now because it's nice to be wanted, I guess, you know? Beats the hell out of not being wanted, out of being alone for years and years and years, I guess. But this chick was a fucking stalker, man. She would stalk me to the fucking end of the year. <laughs> and I couldn't get away from her, dude. I, I, it took me a long time to escape from that, honestly. And now, I've just been so goddamn alone for so long that I kind of miss her, in a way. <laughs> because it sucks being alone. It fucking sucks. <laughs>